2022 is the year where all the transphobes lost. Um, but I guess we can start with 2020 and then move uh, to more current times. Yeah. Well, 2020 was a very awkward year for them because they had failed on basically everything. And Trump was doing this kind of interesting strategy where he was trying to appeal to Clinton voters, uh, which actually, to an extent, did work. If you look at states like Florida, he did increase his numbers with some traditionally Democratic demographics, but he lost enough support among white voters that he uh, lost the election. There's a, there, I think there's kind of a funny statistic that the only uh, group in the entire country that voted for Trump by less or swung against him in terms of vote share in 2020 was white men. Uh, which is like it really goes against a lot of liberal narratives about how that election turned out and is something I try to point out a lot. Uh, but part of what they were doing with that is that they tried to advertise Trump as pro-gay. They, um, they sold pride MAGA stuff. They had like rainbow MAGA hats. They called him the most pro-gay president in history. Uh, they had um, his gay national security advisor give a speech at the RNC. Uh, they had these rallies were called Trump Pride where they, it was basically just anti-immigrant stuff, saying the immigrants hated gay people. So there wasn't much of an interest in this kind of, uh, like, um, culture warring uh, during that election. And that kind of gave transphobes a bit of a time to regroup, and it um, allowed them to separate themselves from both the... I mean, they did actions. There was Schilling spent a ton of money and sent a ton of, like, very tawdry smears against Biden, saying that he was endorsing sex changes on eight-year-olds, but it was it was a limited role. The campaign didn't really embrace him. Uh, but this allowed them to really like be sort of have their hands clean from that disaster, the like of losing that race, losing the Senate and the House and January 6th. So they get sort of a moment where there's this big power vacuum and they can come in as sort of outsiders with a vision for the party where they kind of affirm Trumpism in their own way. And what's concerning about this is that if you read what they wrote here, they constantly cited center right or right wing de- or liberal Democrats who were just bringing up transphobia as like an issue they were losing on with no evidence. Like people like James Carville and David Shore, even elected officials like Abigail Spanberger, they use this as a shorthand and they were constantly quoted by the groups like the APP to prove that this was somehow a losing issue for Democrats. And that was massively influential within the Republican Party in this period because they felt like they had no path forward. And that allows them to kind of create this modus operandi and a like a point of existence and a whole national program around this proven to fail strategy that is being propped up by these people who like really don't know what the hell they're saying on the Democratic side and are just just well, like they're going from God. And, I mean, the, 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 yeah. the, the big problem that I have with this, with, with the way that you hear uh, the electoral argument around uh, shying away from transphobia framed is that there's no empirical data to back it up. Um, it's just Absolutely going from not. like a general kind of ickiness that certain people who are more conservative Democrats feel um, when the issue is brought up, as opposed to the, the timeline that you lay out here, like... I'm, I'm at the end of your piece. You just go through it. Um, I'm, I'm scrolling now. Tudor Dixon defeated yeah. Gre- Gretchen Whitmer. Uh, uh, Tony Evers. No, she was, uh, it was the other way around. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, yeah. uh, Gretchen Whitmer defeated uh, Tudor Dixon. My apologies. Uh, Evers defeated yeah. um, uh, Michaels or Michaels or, or, or however you said yeah, his last I don't know, name. Yeah, some random guy. Right. Shapiro won know. in Pennsylvania against Mastriano. Uh, John Fetterman defeated Oz. Cortez Masto won in Nevada. Carrie Lake lost to Katie Hobbs. Mark Kelly defeated Blake Masters. Tim Walls defeated uh, Jensen in Minnesota. Maggie Hassan defeated Bolduck, who was a very far right uh, Republican. Yeah, uh, Warnock very defeated funny Walker. I, he was the com- yeah. Bolduck was the commander of Africom, which I always thought was very funny. Yeah, it was a bit of a step down from his previous work, going from like commanding the U.S. Army and an entire continent to talking about litter boxes. Yeah, that was always a fun side show. Right, he he was one of the um he was one of the the Republicans that the Democrats ran ads for in the primary process yeah. because he was and so that worked. Everybody right. was hating on that, but it worked. 
Oh, it worked. I, I advocated for it at the time. The Democrats absolutely yeah. should push the more extreme Republicans to uh, the, the, the general election w when they can, because to be honest, yeah. as you like, that's just politics. Um, you want to, yeah. to make your opponent more marginal and associate them with things like January 6th and with things like transphobia. So I guess now yeah, we're in I the think, uh, modern era. Yeah, Go that ahead. Is not, that is not like an abstract thing. I think some people have calculated there are like nearly 10 Senate seats Democrats have won since like 2018 because of candidate quality. They like control. They have the majority now because they have pushed these right wing extremist people ahead of the moderate. Like they don't need much help. They are not, not moderate, like nominated, obviously. But that strategy has been massively successful. If they tried to just have kind of a, like a gentleman's agreement with the moderates and let them win their primaries, they would probably not hold the Senate right now. Are they going to get any of the judges through? Right. But so the 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 the, the overall point here is that those that was a resounding defeat. For transphobia mm -hmm. resounding yeah historically terrible election especially given the context there's no precedent for it so i mean let's just talk about this then from the big picture now that we've laid all of this out here um like it, there's a difference i would say between issues and how they poll because in a vacuum you can you can mm -hmm. ask somebody hey do you think that a trans girl should participate in this track meet or yeah. whatever and you might not get the numbers that you want as somebody who wants to advocate for trans rights, no. but that doesn't mean that they're going to vote based on that response. And that's yeah. the disconnect. Th that, is something that, the, yeah. that is something that people who call themselves like popularists and say that they're all these electoral experts. This is, a, this is like so basic that it baffles me every time. Issue polling matters, but what matters a lot more is issue salience. Mm -hmm. if, if people are going to actually vote on an issue when they go to the polls, and the question of like some like teenager competing in a sport that most people don't care about, like it, somebody who like most people like still I don't know if they even met a trans person. It's not an issue they have any personal investment in. That is not like considered relevant to their daily lives. So when Republicans talk about it all the time, it makes them look out of touch and like opportunistic. And the second thing is that this issue is very very easily connected to a larger question of acceptance of LGBT people, which is a settled question, people are broadly very in favor of that. So you don't need to campaign on this, when, like Republicans try to bring up the, like the boys and girls sports things, which may or may not pull well. You don't need to actually fight on that issue. You can just say, why do you hate gay people? Why do you hate LGBT people? I'm tolerant. I support everybody. What are you, you're a bigot. That works. People connect it to this larger question because they're not dumb enough to think that it's just like, co-signed to this one issue they see what the purpose of these pilot like why these people are bring, bringing it up like voters are generally kind of stupid but they're not like completely like robotic and they can make these connections and they can see what republicans are trying to do here yeah and and i would say too um the people that are going to be motivated to vote based on transphobia are already evangelical right-wingers who are voting for republicans yeah, anyway it expand the base yeah. And the thing is, is that it makes them look like religious lunatics to the secular northern swing voters who are crucial to any Republican national victory, who they've been doing terribly with since Dobbs. So it only like reinforces the ways in which those kinds of very influential like parts of the electorate already dislike Republicans. Yes. And, and on the flip side, is there any evidence to show that activists on the left who are advocating for trans women in sports and trans rights to make sure that trans people have every opportunity to participate in the joys of li life based on their gender identity. Is there any evidence that that is uh, affecting people at the voting booth in terms of uh, turning them off from the left or the Democratic Party? I, it's, it's tough because Democrats have not made this a major part of their campaigns like Republicans have. And when they have, it's just been a larger question of I'm the tolerant candidate. I support everybody. I love everyone. Uh, and that appeals to people. It's a major part of the Democratic appeal. It's You can very easily fold these specific issues into larger questions where the left holds a massive advantage. It like people like kind of need to understand politics is more of a fluid sort of uh, like process than just an ideological war of one thing versus the other like it's a youtube debate channel no offense to any youtube debate channels yeah well i mean uh, the, the, 
you it, it, we've done debates on the show before but um i understand mm-hmm. the limits of what that, what, what that can provide well, it's it's mostly fun for us <laughs> that's not how electoral politics is and people kind of fail to make that distinction sometimes i don't think you guys do obviously yeah well i appreciate that but i mean i i just i'm frustrated though by the vibes argument about transphobia and the fact that it's not backed up by by any of the examples uh, that you so thoughtfully write uh, about in your piece and and what do you think really motivates that like why do you oh, have yeah. well it's you can only come to two conclusions for it it's people are either like closeted transphobes who are disingenuously pushing this argument to because they have a agenda to hurt trans people are they too stupid and lazy to ever be taken seriously on anything because if you're just go if you're a major public figure who writes about this stuff and is influential in the way that a lot of these people are, and you aren't even doing the basic due diligence to see if, like, your gut feeling, which in a lot of cases is motivated just by these people being transphobic, like Michael Bloomberg, when he was running for president, just said blatantly transphobic stuff when trying to say this was an electoral liability. Uh, Like, you're just, you're not dealing with any of this seriously. It's just a level of laziness that is hard for me to even really comprehend. Like, you presumably care about winning, right? You should probably, like, look to see if what you're saying actually matches with what's happening. Like, even, like, you can go down to the lowest possible level, totally remove any sense of morality, and they still fail even by their own standards, just out of sheer neglect. 